Miss Shirley Temple. Mr. Eddie, what do I do now? Well, anything you say, Shirley, it's your program. But if I might make a suggestion, as one singer to another, how about a song? All right, Mr. Eddie, I'll sing. Someday you'll find your bluebird. Good. Someday you'll find your bluebird. Wait your turn. Will be so sublime. It may be right near you, or maybe worlds apart. When love comes, you'll find it on the windowsill of your heart, and then you'll hear your bluebird sing a song of happiness to you. Some 30 years ago, the famous Belgian author Maurice Maeterlinck wrote a play and called it The Bluebird. It must have carried a message the world sorely needed, for within a few years it was known and loved in every corner of the earth, by young and old alike. It's been acted in every country, in every language, and on almost every stage, until to the whole world the Bluebird has come to be the symbol of happiness. And now it's been brought to the screen by Daryl Zanuck and 20th Century Fox as the most magnificent and spectacular Technicolor production of the year, with Shirley Temple in the role of Meatle. And tonight, at this very moment in faraway France, Maurice Maeterlinck, now 77 years old, is seated at his shortwave radio, waiting to hear Shirley Temple bring his immortal story to life again. Did you like working in the Bluebird, Shirley? Oh, yes, Mr. Pryor. I loved it. Better than any picture I was ever in, I think. Do you know the Bluebird, Mr. Pryor? Oh, of course. It's the story of Meatle and Tiltill, a girl and boy who lived over a hundred years ago, if I remember correctly. Do you remember, all right. And do you remember the Royal Forest? That's where the story begins. Oh, it was beautiful. The most beautiful forest I've ever seen. The green pine trees were all glistening with snow. Oh, there was lots of snow, because it was the day before Christmas. And I remember my brother, Tiltil, and I were walking through the forest. The birds were singing all around us. They were very happy, because no one was supposed to hunt them in the royal forest. But I did. I guess I wasn't a very nice little girl. Tiltil and I set a trap. And then we hid behind a tree. And pretty soon, a little thrush came to eat the crumbs we'd spread. He came closer and closer. And there, we had him in the trap. And all the other birds flew right away. We were pretty excited, too. But suddenly, we heard a horn. It was a royal forester. He waved his hand and shouted at us. And I yelled, Come on, Tilt Hill. Run, run. The royal forester. And we did run, too. All the way back to the village. We didn't slow down till we were passing Angela's house. It wasn't much of a house, because Angela's mother was very poor, and Angela was sick and lying in bed near the window. I guess she wondered what we were carrying in the basket, because she opened the window and called to us. Meetle? Oh, Meetle. Oh, hello, Angela. What have you got in the basket, Meetle? Something for Christmas? It's a bird. A very rare bird. It's a thrush, we think. I trapped it in the royal forest. Oh, I've always wanted a bird like that. I don't suppose you wouldn't give it to me, would you? I should say not. 
I promised this bird to another little girl for Christmas. Have you? Who? Who do you suppose? Me. Come on, Chilchil. Yes, we'd better hurry. Mommy and Daddy don't like it when we wait for dinner. Oh, I'll show them my bird. And they'll forget to scold us. Where have you children been? What kept you? Look, Mommy, we caught the most beautiful bird. There's no excuse for being late to supper. Now go wash your hands. Yes, Mommy. Down, Tylo, down. Your mummy had to set the table, Meetle. Did you forget the time? You know, Daddy, I think the village clock is slow. Do you hear that, Mummy? The village clock was slow. She has eyes, hasn't she? You saw it was growing dark. Well, yes. But Angela Burlingo stopped us. I had to talk to her. She's sick, you know. Then we looked in at the rich children's house. Mm. Oh, just for a second, Daddy. Never mind all that now. Now, come on. Take your places at the table. There. We're ready for grace. For what we are about to receive, and for all thy bounteous blessings, O Lord, make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Me, 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 Tylette, get away from there. Get away from my bird. Get away, Tylette. And I told you, Meetle, not to trap birds in the woods. But, Daddy, it's such fun. And what do you think, Mommy? Angela wanted me to give my bird to her. Well, why didn't you? It would have been something to cheer her up. Oh, poor mite, sick in bed all winter. It's not my fault she's sick. It's your fault that you're selfish. You've got so much that she hasn't, Meetle. What have I got? Health, for one thing. What's that? And a roof over your head, warm clothes to wear. These old things. And plenty to eat, but nothing I like. Nothing good. Not like those rich children have. Cakes, candies, dolls to play with, pre dresses, everything. I have nothing. Stop it, Meagle. Stop it at once. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm not ashamed. I hate it. I hate it all. Meagle. Another word and you'll go straight to bed. You're an ungrateful child. I don't care. I'm so unhappy. Of course you're unhappy. If you don't mend your ways, you'll never be happy. Never. Oh, who's that? Come in. Oh, it's you, Will Well, sit down. Have some supper with us. Thanks, but I, I have no time. I have bad news, I'm afraid. What's wrong? Orders to mobilize at once. Mobilize? Oh, no. Soldiers are on the march again. We assemble in the village square tomorrow at noon. I'll be there. Good. Till tomorrow, then. War. Daddy, I don't want you to go. I must go, dear. Why do they have to have war? What makes war anyway? The same thing that makes trouble everywhere. Greed and selfishness. Someone is not content with what they have. But you're not like that, Daddy. Why should you have to go? That's what's wrong about it, child. You can't be unhappy inside yourself without making others unhappy, too. Come. Come now, children. Be off to bed. Daddy and I have many things to do. for the way I behaved at supper. Yes, yes, dear. Good night. When Daddy said someone is not content, did he mean like me? Well, like you are sometimes. But I don't want to be like that, Mummy. Really, I don't. I know, I know. I don't know what makes me do it. Oh, Mummy, I'm so unhappy. Oh, there, there, dear. <laughs> you want to be happy, don't you? Yes, Mummy. Like you. You're happy all the time, aren't you? Well, nearly all the time, dear. Now go to sleep. Don't worry, Mummy. Daddy will come back. Yes. Yes, dear. Now sleep. Oh, both of you. And be quick about it. Look, Needle. You're all dressed. 
And so are you. Why, Churchill, even your boots are laced. She did it. Come, come, don't stand there staring. There's no time to lose. We but... must find the bluebird. But where should we look for it? In the past, in the future, everywhere. But, ma'am, we're not allowed to go places alone at night. There's your dog and cat. Take them. But, but, but we'll get lost in the dark. I'll take care of that. Light, you who give beauty to the earth. Up here! It's a queen. She came right out of the lamp, all covered with light. I am light. Come to guide you, dear little friend. Where would you like to go? We're not quite sure where to go. Tiny said we must find the bluebird. We don't know where to look. She said in the past, the future, everything. Perhaps we'd better start in the past. But where is the past? Light? Do you know the way? Of course. The past is just behind us. I'll show you. Come. Come. Here it is. The road to the past lies through there. But, but that's the graveyard. It's the only way to the past. You must lead from here, Needle. But take heed. It is now nearly midnight. You must be back within the hour. Otherwise, you will remain in the past forever. Goodbye now. Uh, aren't you coming with us? No. Light has no business in a graveyard. But I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting. Carving my little figures. I've been at this one for a whole year. That's because we're so seldom awake. months and months now that you've forgotten. Oh, the last time. Let me see now. It, it was Easter morning. The, the, the church bells were ringing. Easter? We didn't go out that day. We both had very bad cold. No, but you thought of us. Yes, we missed you. Yes, every time you think of us, we wake up and see you again. But we thought you were dead. No, dear, no. People never die. Only when they're forgotten. Everything's the same here. The house. The yard. Oh, Granny, I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> to Grandpa. Huh? That's the hole in the door I made with your gimlet. Uh, and a good spanking you got for us. <laughs> <laughs> Look there, Pop. Here's where you used to measure us on the door. Me. Let's see how much we've grown. All right? My, my, how you both shot up. Till, till you're three fingers taller. <laughs> and you meet a four... No. Why? I'm big strong. Feel my muscle, Grandpa. Well, well. <laughs> Grandpa, huh? you haven't finished carving little Coco yet. Oh, what chance have I got when I'm always asleep? Come along, Tiltil. We'll do some work on it now in my workshop. All right, Grandpa. Don't be long, Tiltil. Oh, you're in no hurry. Yes, but we are. We must be back within the hour. What time is it, Granny? Now sit down. It's only half past twelve. Granny, the reason why we're here, we've got to find a bluebird. It's terribly important. A bluebird? Oh, yes, I'm sure we've got one. Really, Granny? Where? Show me. Oh, we've plenty of time for that. I I haven't had a morsel of gossip in a twelfth month. But, Granny... Tell me, did Mrs. Van Groen's daughter marry the burgomaster? No, she didn't. Why? What happened?